Hey there, BookTube. How's it going? Happy Friday night. For sure. Hey, Room Note. <laughs> hey, Richardson Reads. Mark. Mark in the house. I don't know if that means Mark and Deb. I hope so. <laughs> but I don't know if it's uh, Mark and Deb or just Mark. But nice to see y'all for sure. What a crazy week. Definitely crazy for me. <laughs> Um, a busy, busy week at work, but an awesome week reading. That's for sure. Bookish Bryant's in the house. Yes. Scott and Becky. Thank you. Mark and Deb are here. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you all for coming by. Always Friday nights. We're going to get into some cool stuff. I had a, have had an awesome reading a uh, month of january and it's just gotten more and more awesome here at the end of it so i figured i would touch on that a bit it's no doubt um author an author that i've come in contact with and started reading um something by something you know and a, a very definitive something collected fictions of borges and this is um just a huge a lot of you know you got it got a lot of uh a collect co a collection of his works fictions is in here i started off with a universal history of, of iniquity artifices the aleph the maker in praise of darkness brody's report Book of Sand and Shakespeare's Memory are all in here, and I'm just going through all of them. But it, I, I have not read any Borges before, and this is, yeah, my retro, my retro in '64. I love it. Um, it is it, it Borges is blowing my mind. I can't believe that I haven't come in contact with Borges before, because it is so fun. <laughs> Mario 64. <laughs> Perfect Dark is awesome. <laughs> um, I've, I've always been a Nintendo guy. My first gaming system was Nintendo. You know, uh, I, of course, I had like an Atari back in the day when I was really young. And uh, but I remember our first Nintendo and staying up playing Mario all night. Hey, Lindsay Bartlett. Lindsay's in the house. Thank you for coming by for sure. Um, hey, the font, Barb. Yes, Barb is so freaking hilarious. I tell you, Barb and uh, Isabella, y'all make great content. And I commend Isabella for the editing because I'm sure if we saw what ended up on the cutting room floor, the font would either be <laughs> way more popular or banned from youtube probably banned from youtube <laughs> am i right barb am i right <laughs> nice time at sinclair you're funny all right so uh we'll get to we'll get to the the borges in a second i don't want to touch on that first even though i've already touched on it first right i can't get enough I didn't realize how quick and powerful Borges is and, and to do something so short that just sends you into a whole different world. And, and, and there's a lot to think about for hours and hours, you know, when, after you read a Borges short story, Hey baby, Emily Clemens is joining driving home from work <laughs> me and emily have had the hardest friday i tell you um it's been ridiculous i just i barely um was able to make it to the live here so um emily is actually driving home so hopefully uh i see you soon baby hey leo leo in the house thank you for coming by brother Georgia drivers be crazy. That's right. Hey, Scott Danielson. Thank you for coming by. Uh, book to movie adaptations. 
You know, I was given book to movie adaptations some thought, actually. You know, if it turns out that I see the movie before I read the book, I rarely read the book. And if I read the book before I see a movie, I rarely watch the movie. And it's just how I go, how I do. And so uh, I was thinking about that kind of stuff. Some some booktube uh, video I watched was talking about some movie adaptations. And, you know, there's there's those things, there's those movies that I've watched that are uh, books that I watched the movie, you know, first. And then I've just never, ever had even a desire to pick up the book. But then also, if I read the book, um, I don't have a strong desire to watch the movie either. Because why? You know, I already got the story and I and I really like it. Robert Lundum. Born trilogy, that's for sure. Awesome. That's very awesome. But there is a whole lot that I've, you know, watched the, the movie and read the book. But it just is something that happens, you know. It's just something that uh, because I love the director or I love uh, the writer, something like that. So um, I was thinking because I'm getting into and I did bring it home. Let me show. I've been reading. I've been reading Gunther Grass, The Call of the Toad. I don't know. It's my first uh, Gunther Grass. I haven't uh, come in contact with anything other than this book. And it's very cool how this uh, story is told. And it's told from a narrator that is getting letters and a story from an old school buddy. And the old school buddy is like a widower in Poland. They're in Poland. And the widower first first off meets a widow um, about his age and they hit it off. And they have this kind of uh, quick relationship. And they make this plan to um, basically fund a cemetery for war veterans after World War II. The Tin Drum, that's for sure. That's that's one of his most uh, well-known and most uh, lauded books is The Tin Drum. Nice. You guys have, uh, have definitely come in contact with Gunter Gross. So I have uh, The Call of the Toad here. And then I have the flounder on the way. Um, I'm liking it a lot. It's it's very well told. It's very strange in a way, but it's hard to put your <laughs> Astro Neatly books. That is uh, a buddy from Instagram called Neatly Published. Thank you for coming by, brother. So, um, Neatly published, and um, a bunch of other people are in on our Thomas Pinchon Against the Day read-along. This book, I've, I've read almost 100 pages. I'm at like page 96. That's where the chapter ends. So I have, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on page, I finished page 96. I'm at 97. And I have we haven't officially started the read yet, but I want to make sure that I finish this beast in February. So I'm getting a little ahead of it. I've read 100 pages and it feels like I've read 300 pages. You know, that's Thomas Pynchon for you. Um, But it is very interesting. Very weird. <laughs> very, very Pynchon. It is a beast, isn't it? Um, I'm loving it though. It's, uh, it's getting very cool. I mean, it starts off really cool. It's just cool as hell. I love Thomas Pinchon, one of my favorite authors, to tell you the truth. I have so many favorite authors, don't I? <laughs> Borges is a new favorite. Oh my God. Okay. 
So, um, finished, finished 100 Years of Solitude. We're going to do a live stream on that this next Thursday. So, that is um, the 4th, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Scott. Um, I, I usually, I mean, you know, last year I didn't read any Pinchon. But it's just because I had started the BookTube channel and I was just, I mean, instantly had so much on my TBR and so many books that I wanted to get to that I was just reading all kinds of new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. Um, but I had Against the Day and um, Mason and Dixon. That's the two that I have to read. So I'm uh, I'm happy to get another pinch on under my belt. We're going to knock out uh, against the day. And then I will do Mason and Dixon next year, you know, some, somewhere down the road for sure. Thanks for being along for the read along, uh, neatly published. That's going to be fun stuff. So another um, author that I've never read anything about I've never read anything by. Nice. Nice. When Borges went blind, the author Alberto Manuel uh, used to read to him. That's uh, such an endearing um, thing. Um, I, I believe Manuel is, is cited in one of these stories, actually, that I've read already. Um. He's a, you know, one of his friends and Borges obviously has no qualms about like writing himself into <laughs> into a story and and his friends as well. Um, he, he does these kind of fictional things, but lends credence to them by, you know, putting in things that seem very, very uh, nonfiction, things that really happen. So I'm actually reading uh, another. I, I figured in between these big books that I got going on in 2021, I'm going to um, read some some shorter stuff and I'm going to get into some uh, Jeffrey Eugenides. I've never read any Jeffrey Eugenides. And so I got these books used for very cheap. And so I just grabbed them because, you know, they're going to be something I can read at any time. The Virgin Suicides. Um, and this is what I was thinking of when I was talking about, I don't really read a book. I don't even have a desire to read a book after I watch the movie. Nice. Um, after I watch a movie, you know, I mean, I, I've already got the story and things like that. And there is times that I have read a book after watching the movie, but it wasn't, um, necessarily because I wanted to like see how they compared or whatever. I just loved, you know, the author or whatever. And then there are times that I've um, seen the movie after reading a book, but it wasn't because, you know, I wanted to compare or, or like see how well they did as far as adaptation, because the mediums are totally different. It was just because, you know, I love the, the um, movie maker or director or whatever, but, I used to love the movie of the Virgin Suicides back in the day, mostly because of the um, mostly because of the soundtrack. Uh, the soundtrack is definitely done by um, Air, and they are awesome. Hey to the lit house, Yasmin's in the house. Thank you for coming by. So uh, Stephen King does write himself into his books, most notably in the Dark Tower series. It's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome what he does with the Dark Tower series. And I have Middlesex by uh, Jeffrey Eugenides. So um, if I like, I I'm going to read The Virgin Suicides. The Virgin Suicides is on like so many people's favorite books that they've ever read until something else, you know, usurps that top spot um but i've never you know read it because I, I never even cared to read it but i've seen so many people talking about the virgin suicides and how good of a book it is and then i heard uh another booktuber it might have been the book chemist but 
somebody else as well talking about Jeffrey Eugenides and talking about how all of his books uh, do. It's like it's like one is like really character driven. I think that's the Virgin Suicides, if I'm not mistaken. One is really plot driven. And I think that's Middlesex, if I'm not mistaken. But then uh, there's the marriage plot as well. And so I don't have that one. I don't have anything but these two. These are going to be my first experiences with uh, Jeffrey Eugenides. And I'm looking forward to it because I'm, I'm always looking to read great stuff. You know what I mean? I don't want to read kind of good stuff. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Melissa Furman is in the house. Thank you for coming by the live. Um, I'm always wanting to read just the the best stuff. I don't want mediocre books. And, you know, we'll see um, what it is, <laughs> how it is, <clears throat> um, how it works out. So I did haul a couple of books and if you got me on Instagram, it's everyone who reads three words underscore in between the words. Um, I don't really, uh, I don't use my YouTube to point people to my Instagram. I use Instagram to point people to my YouTube, right? Uh, so on YouTube, on, on Instagram, you'll see a little bit of, I, I try to do a picture every single day, at least one picture, you know, one picture a day. And, and if I'm doing a book, a YouTube thing. That's right, room note. So we'll get to the Theodore Sturgeon next. <laughs> so um, I I uh, I do post stuff on the Instagram that's kind of like little Easter eggs or stuff that I don't touch on on the channel. I've I've posted a lot of books that are like on my bookshelves and things like that that I um that I don't uh show on the channel just because they're it's not like I can talk. I mean I could talk for a whole video about it, but I don't know how interesting it would be. It would be for a really, really small audience. It would be interesting, but you know, it's kind of like if people don't have an, an experience with something, then, you know, they're not going to they're not going to really I'm not, I'm not here to turn people on to something necessarily that is like a school of thought that's not in their wheelhouse. I just want to turn people on to good books, you know what I mean? And just and just and, and that's about it. Just just keep things uh, more light and stuff like that. So there's some there's some some crazy stuff that I have on the shelf that I will, you know, kind of get into on my YouTube channel at some point when um, something, kind of, when, when something builds, right? But uh, Instagram being such a visual medium, I can just kind of take a picture and show and, and take a few pictures and show it in one post, write a little paragraph or, or something, and bam, that'll be it. And, you know, it, anybody that sees it, they like it and they go on. But then some people see it and they're like, Wow, you know, blah 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 blah, and we and we have a little conversation about it, and that's cool. That's what I think is is, is really cool about it. So, um, what I I did share a picture earlier in the week of what I hauled, and I hauled this on suicide. This is a collection of writings from uh, great writers, uh, edited by John Miller. Introduction by Robert Coles, and check this lineup, okay, of great writers on the ultimate question is what it's called. Uh, we have Plato, Sylvia Plath, Walker Percy, Albert Camus, Virginia Woolf, Langston Hughes, Gustave Flaubert, Primo Levi, Graham Greene, Dorothy Parker. Shakespeare, uh, just excerpt from Hamlet there. Emily Dickinson, John Donne, the uh, the poet. Uh, Borges, Ambrose Bierce, Tolstoy, and William Styron. So 
I can't wait to uh, just peruse this at my leisure because this is going to be one that uh, just ha gives a lot of food for thought. I have not started reading it yet at all. I, I, I'm, I'm reading more than enough stuff and I'm about to, you know, get 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 a couple of things off of my reading but i i already have the next book that i'm going to show right now is going right at the top of the list because i'm doing this a buddy read again with ben over at bookshore he's a really great reader ben is a really strong reader <laughs> Scott Danielson, we're gonna see about that. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you in mind. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He has some potential. We'll see how, what he has to say on suicide. Right. So Ben over at Bookshore is a really, really strong reader, and he's a really a uh, smart guy, a good thinker. I like talking with him and stuff like that. And we did our that live before where we were talking about Sturgeon, right? We did that off the cuff. We didn't talk about anything. And I told him specifically, I said, I don't want to talk to you about the book. We just, we're just going to read it and then we'll talk about it on the live because we're going to do, we're going to be able to talk through this kind of narrative. So what is told? Yeah. Sir Francis Bacon. That's right. So, um, what, what was told to him by Delaney that is the strongest and best Theodore Sturgeon novel is more than human. So I was able to find this book club edition. I got it for like three bucks. Right? Nothing on the back. Sturgeon has these trippy covers, man. And see, this was written in like 1952. Is that right? 53. Sorry. So I think this might be the, the book that he wrote after Dreaming Jewels, the one that I read before. So um, short work, 186 pages, going to read really fast. Um, but I'm looking for some cool ideas because we had some. <laughs> it is a creepy cover, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, you, you, uh, you have, you're familiar with it, Mark. So I think uh, I'm in, I'm in good hands with Sturgeon, right? Delaney said that this was uh, Sturgeon's strongest work. So I'm looking forward to getting to it because I really did. I enjoyed the Dreaming Jewels. I wish it was longer. I wish there was more to it than what it was, really. I mean, it's just this short little thing. And that's just me as a reader. I. <laughs> it looks like a Rob Zombie book, doesn't it? <laughs> Very cool. You're excited to get started with what, Scott? <laughs> yeah, so uh, cool. Very cool. Um, I like I like Sturgeon, and I like you know I like reading short stories, kind of. I do find myself m with most short stories. God body. Very cool. I'm going to I'm going to keep that one in mind, uh, Mark. Oh, nice. Hyperion. Yes. Yes. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about Hyperion. That's right. Mark and Scott are reading Hyperion. Maybe Becky, too. Very cool. It's awesome. So. uh, You know, I. With most short stories, most short stories, unless they're, I mean, like Flannery O'Connor has her own thing, right? And the way that she does short stories, they are succinct, like they are within themselves complete. So if a short story is like that, where it has its whole world, beginning, middle, end, thrust, and everything is like in it and complete, then I'm happy with it. But if a story, if a short story is bringing up great ideas, but it doesn't flesh them out and it doesn't feel like a complete uh, story, then it lets me down. I don't, I, I really do wish 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, Becky. Well, uh, feel free to jump into Underworld later in the year with us, but it's it's a Delillo is a tough read uh, for most. That's for sure. Delillo is a tough read for me. And um I I I I know others too that say the same thing. Delillo has his own style, his own way of writing. And I don't know, but I think I mean Becky, you would love Hyperion. It's an amazing story. And it's very beautiful. There's there's everything is in Hyperion. So with that being said about the short works, you know, the Dreaming Jewels did leave me thinking like that. Like, I wish that the Dreaming Jewels was longer. And I wonder if with more than human, because it's even shorter than the Dreaming Jewels, 186 pages. If at the end of it, I'm going to be worrying. <laughs> nice, Becky. <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to be thinking uh, after more than human that I wish that that one was longer as well. Because it's short, and if it's a great idea, and I'd love to see it worked out more, then I'm going to be like, well, why didn't you? Why didn't you make this a 300 page, 400 page novel? You know, because I, I, I want that. <laughs> you know? Why don't you do? Why didn't you do that for me, Sturgeon? You know. <laughs> so, uh, Yasmin and I are having a blast. If she will allow me to uh, speak for her for a bit, but we have been having a blast reading through Borges. And thank you so much for <laughs> coming along with me on, on this journey because I've never read any Borges and it is so awesome. And Yasmin is Argentinian, Argent, Argentine as well. And so there's, there's cultural things, there's uh, some words and, and uh, just, things that are in the culture like there was this drink was it mate yerba mate um that i had no idea what it was because borges just in one of the stories said we passed around mate and it went all the way around the room and back to me before you know the man died <laughs> it's, it's kind of a dark story but um it was the man on pink corner but I just glossed over it. You know, I, I thought it was it was a drink that the bartender was making and stuff. But I didn't really know what that what it meant by it went all the way around the room and came back to me before the man died. I, you know, don't don't know what it is. And shared with that. And it was great. Want to hear an excerpt? Uh, I tell you. I am um, on the third story of fictions. And I have read, and I have read um, all of, what is that? Uh, a Universal History of Iniquity. So I like the Universal History of Iniquity, but it's not like some, something that was written stuck out at me. This is like fictional biographical sketches of horrible people. That's what it is. And then the story at the end is very good. Man on Pink Corner. It was cool and definitely had some kind of mystery to it to figure out. But it, it wasn't a hard to, to figure out thing. But it just drew the reader in like that. But uh, one thing from fictions, from the first story of fictions is Lon Cubar Orbis Tertius. And it is amazing. Like completely amazing. So what Borges does in this is he creates a book. Like there's an encyclopedia, actually. <laughs> I'll read an excerpt. So um, he he create there. There's an encyclopedia that he's referencing and doing kind of a literary criticism, literary critique of. And exploring, but this thing is not real. Everything about it is created by Borges, but you get so drawn in, and he's such a master at, at what he's doing that he says things that you would only say if you had actually come in contact with this work. 
And so it's very cool. But one of the things that he's talking about, um, about books, and he's talking about uh, different books like very, very uh, esoteric books like the Tao, Tao Te Ching and 101 Nights um, and the Bible, you know, of course, and all these kind of things. Their books are so different from our own. Their fiction has but a single plot with every and in imaginable permutation. Their works of philosophical nature invariably contain both thesis and the antithesis, the rigorous pro and contra of every argument. A book that does not contain its counter book is considered incomplete. So he's talking about that encyclopedia, how um, there is there is like uh, it, it's hermetic is what it is. It's hermetics and Kabbalah where every truth is only a half truth. You have to have its opposite. You have to have its counter in order to have a full truth. So it was, it was, it's, it's awesome. I love, I love that first story and we went <laughs> kind of crazy. I did anyways. I went off the deep end uh, with that story, but I feel like I was in good hands because Borges already went off the deep end, right? <laughs> Borges. Borges is like throwing us out into, you know, a, a, a jungle where there's no map and no compass. <laughs> And and only uh, we have just like you know we're like the kid in uh, uh, call call of the wild or into the wild where he's all he's got is one book to tell him what what stuff is or whatever you know what I mean it's ridiculous so um I'm loving it thank you very much Yasmin yeah I'm loving the Borges and um and I did grab out some Kabbalah. Because I wanted to say that, I mean, it's obvious that Borges loves this kind of stuff, even though I don't think that Borges was like a practicing Kabbalist or anything like that. He's using it just to the universal library, like the Library of Babel, because that is uh, in fictions, I believe. And I can't wait to get to that. <laughs> I can't wait to read fictions. Uh, Yasmin said that she had already read fictions. So lucky you <laughs> for sure. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really digging it. Cool. Library of Babel. Yeah, it's coming up. It's maybe like two or three stories ahead for me. I'm on um, Pierre Menard, author of The Coyote. Quixote. And then, yeah, there's three uh, more stories. The Circular Ruins is one. The Lottery in Babylon is the next one. And then a survey of works of Herbert Quain. And then there's the Library of Babel and the Garden of Forking Paths. You know, when I talk about Borges or if I show a picture of this on the Instagram, people go nuts. And more than a couple of times people have called out just that story, the library of Babel. So I can't wait to read it. I can't wait to read it. Yeah. <laughs> you would like it neatly published. You would really like it. I'm sure I, I would recommend for to anybody because what he does, I mean, most of these works are like less than five pages. They are so succinct, but they are so strong and written so well that it's just it's just mind blowing. And. Uh, cool. And that's the when it when it comes down to it, uh, I had said. It's something like Borges writes a short story or he writes something, you know, because these aren't short stories. Any, nothing that I've read so far, except for The Man on Pink Corner, has been a short story, has been a narrative. They're, they're more like literary criticism 
or bio sketches or something like that. But it's like he writes out and he might write 15 or 20 pages and then just go through and redline all over the place and, and, and combine sentences, make sentences more full and more robust and keep doing it until he has four pages that say everything that he wrote in those in those 15 or 20 you know so it is just awesome it's so awesome and i and i guess that's a testament to uh his his uh ability because he's just really good enough to do it like that but is it is it just ability or is it you know is it a testament to revision as well because I feel like that's that's the method. And there is a, an awesome long interview in the Paris Review uh, interviews. I don't know if you get that magazine, Mark. I know you uh, read a lot of literary magazines. If, you re- if you've read a Borges Paris Review interview, but um, there he gives his so a lot of his method and um it's super interesting super super interesting <laughs> yeah thank you're welcome scott <laughs> you're welcome brother so very cool um <laughs> y'all are very funny so um i don't i don't I try to do my best. You know, I watch a lot of booktube. I watch it as much as I can. But there's always things that slip through the cracks. And there's always um, tags that I feel like, you know, this tags are gone around. And I haven't seen that I was tagged in. But maybe I was because I just didn't watch the one (laughs) that somebody tagged me or something. Nice. Very cool, Mark. Yeah, I figured you might be up on it. That's for sure. Just because it's your job, right? (laughs) Do your job, sir. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Paris Review interviews as well. Um, Because, because, man, it's so awesome to hear uh, writers' methods. You know what I mean? And, you know, they're not... Some of them are different, but some of them are are just like regular people in ways, you know, they've devoted their life to creating something like that. (laughs) I uh, I've been I've been trying to. uh, Remember, there was there was one tag that I was hit on. Oh, I remember. Did you did you see uh, Tom L.A. Books tag is Dante tag? That's a good tag. And so I was um, actually tagged to do that. I have to do it. It's a very cool one. <laughs> you are you are interesting enough for tags room. No, nope. it's just it's just, you know, I noticed that people. Often, you know, the they, they just tag the same people. And I'm guilty of it as well. Nice, Roberto Calasso. I don't know. I don't know if I've uh, come in contact with that. I'll look it up. That's for sure. I'll definitely look it up. I, uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I, uh, I was reading uh, Philip Roth. <laughs> That's the last one that I came in contact with. Uh, it's uh, so pretentious. <laughs> But, you know, it's Philip Roth, so what would you think? What would you... I should create a Flannery tag. It would be really dark and really weird. <laughs> That's a very good idea, Melissa Furman. Because when it comes down to it, I've only created one tag, and it was... It did not, it did not you know, get get uh embraced by the community and and that's fine but it it's because i think it's because it was like kind of sappy i'm a real kind of like sentimental person 
like a romantic. You know what I mean? Um, I love books and I love talking about uh, past reading experiences. Uh, that that tag that I just did where I go off on <laughs> uh, a little a question to the community at the end of it. Uh, the, the, the 2020 uh, reader tag. That tag is right up my alley. I love those kind of tags. I've watched every one of those that I could that ever pops up in my in my feed because I love that stuff. I want to hear about people's first reading experiences. I want to know how they see themselves as a reader, how they saw themselves as a reader, as a young reader, and how they have grown and all that. <laughs> if uh, Donahue hates Colasso, uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I, I don't think I am. <laughs> um, then I then I'm sure I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna have to check it out. <laughs> Thank you, the font. Um, I don't mean uh the tag that I just did was sappy the 2020 reader tag, but the one that I created was sappy. It's called the book nostalgia tag. Um, and Sarah MG reads just did it. She just did it in a random way because, uh, <laughs> somebody had done my tag. Was it Melissa? Somebody just did nice. Colossa. Colossa. So now, now I'm now I'm going to pronounce it two different ways. So I'm for sure going to pronounce it wrong, right? <laughs> <That's retarded. clears throat> yeah, you did do my tag. Becky and uh, Scott did the tag, but uh, you know it was just it was just that kind of thing. But so um, I I'm not I'm not like I don't think about uh, tags. That was just something that was inspiring to me, but I really would. I, I like to do tags, so, and I really would like to come up with a tag. I might have a uh, cool. I might think of like a a way that I can bring some questions into a Flannery O'Connor tag that are not like any questions that I've seen on tags. Hey, uh. <laughs> Yes, fluffy ducks in love. You know what? I bet if I if that tag would get traction, <laughs> it totally would get traction. Just not on any of the booktubers that I watch, right? <laughs> I mean, you would do it. Barb would do it and rip it to shreds. <laughs> it would be fantastic. Hey, Josh, working man reads in the house. Nice to see you, brother. Oh, Friday, baby. I'm so I'm so glad that the week's over. Tomorrow is um is my daddy daughter day with Zelda. We're gonna have a blast. <laughs> We're gonna have a blast. I love I love it when uh on Barb's uh <laughs> I think you were doing a tag and you were like, What genre do I not like very much? And and there's like this pregnant pause and it's romance <laughs> sappy <laughs> gooey <laughs> uh, totally uh unrealistic <laughs> romance <laughs> i love it yeah daddy daughter days are my favorite uh saturdays me and zelda have so much fun man um we were we were planning it out a little bit <laughs> before i started the live just what we wanted to do. We usually, you know, we have our little routine, but we switch it up from time to time and just do different stuff. Sometimes uh, a bookstore is involved. <laughs> Blah! <laughs> hey, Moto Hero. Moto Hero is a, is a buddy from Instagram as well. Uh, Jason from C.S. Miller Books. C.S. Miller Books is an awesome... Um, <laughs> uh, is an awesome bookseller. 
tell you about Gunter Gross. Man, you should grab some Gunter Gross. If you have a if you have the the the, the chance, Miller, you should definitely grab Gunter Gross. Um this is the first that I've read, but I have the flounder on the way. Very highly regarded. And when I showed Gross earlier, uh the Tin Man. Uh that is that is the one that everybody you know, knows, and it won the Pulitzer Prize in literature, for God's sake. Get the books, man. <laughs> so I'm on the last story of Oblivion. I've read the entire uh, collection so far, except for the final story. I don't want it to be over. Mm -hmm. But um, it's going to have to be over because David Foster Wallace is quickly becoming usurped by Borges in my reading. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Zelda is a smart kid. We have some fun. <laughs> Aw. Moto Hero. Moto Hero, you're my hero. So uh we're loving this. We we're not done talking it out. We're not done talking it out. So we're going, we're keeping on the discussions with it. But I got one more uh, story to read. And Oblivion, the story Oblivion actually scared me. Okay. It's so weird. It's like the Twilight Zone. It's like an awesome episode of the Twilight Zone. And I was just like, at the end of it, I was like, like this, reading, you know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. Um, and I, and I, and I mean, I can't wait to read it again to like, really now that I know what's coming, you know what I mean? But that first experience of the story Oblivion scary it's just scary tin man <laughs> is that right <laughs> did i say it wrong i swear to god melissa Furman. y'all are y'all are y'all are y'all are really uh getting at me tonight i don't know maybe i'm 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 exhausted y'all <laughs> if i told you what i did at work today you wouldn't believe me, okay I did so much work. I did not chill. I did not rest. It was it was just ridiculous. So, but I really enjoy doing the lives. I enjoy tin drum. That's right. I enjoy uh, spending time with y'all on Fridays. It's just part of my routine. Nice. Very cool, Scott. I tell you, I don't own a copy of Infinite Jest because Infinite Jest, I don't know about taking that much David Foster Wallace. You know what I mean? David Foster Wallace is exhausting to me to read, even in these small bits. I mean, and all I've read is small bits. You know, I've read uh, Consider the Lobster. And uh, a supposedly fun thing I never do again. And uh, Oblivion now, almost except for the last story. And um, this is water. I love that that speech. This is water. And um, there might be another one. I don't remember. But the, the next thing that I read is going to be the broom of the system. That's going to be the next one. That's going to be my first bigger <laughs> that's going to be my first. Thank you, Melissa. I I don't take offense. I don't take offense. I mean, I'm out. Oh, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't hurt my feelings if you tried. Let me tell you. Got to grab them when you see them. That's right. You got to grab them when you see them. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, I have a copy of Pale King. I got it uh, on a gift card 
just of after Christmas because I, I didn't, and I didn't realize how big it was. I didn't realize that it was that big of a novel until it came. So I'm going to read the broom of the system. That's going to be my first, like try to take a big bite out of David Foster Wallace. But, um, man, it's just so oppressive. The, the, the endless descript descriptions and hyper realistic situations and stuff. I mean, it's just so um, overwhelming to me to read David Foster Wallace that I know that if I get Infinite Jest, I'm going to read it and I'm not going to read anything else. And it's probably going to stop me reading for like two months or more. You know what I mean? It's just going to be like that. And I don't really want to do that. I don't want to fall into that, especially not right now. You know, I got some big ideas for the channel going forward. Uh, definitely not anything that I'm going to share right now, but you know, uh, we'll get through 2021 with the kind of thing uh, that I'm doing with the big book focus. And then after uh, why I'm doing that is, is because I have a, an idea for the, the future of the channel and um, y'all are going to love it. Y'all are going to love it. Oh my God. The room note. I hear, I, I hear it's, I hear it's, it's, it's tough, man. I hear it's bad, tough, you know, to do research for writing the pale King. I hear that David Foster Wallace went to like an accounting firm and got into a mediocre position, like job at the accounting firm and did the job for like, a, a period of time to know all the banal, useless day to day, you know, that, that quotidian crap that they all subject themselves to in the name of, you know, making a paycheck. Oh, a buddy of mine said, <laughs> You know, David Foster Wallace did commit suicide. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a loss. That's for sure. <laughs> so, uh, y'all are funny. Um, but I do, uh, I do think that David Foster Wallace, uh, definitely, definitely was a, a kind of a pessimist pessimistic uh, mind mind state even though he did have a lot of re redeeming qualities in his in his writing and in his in his thinking in some times but the falling into the the kind of mental negative cycle was just super easy for him you know and he saw reasons for that all over the place. <laughs> Barb, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm going to rearrange my bookshelves by color. I tell you, I've seen people doing that, and I'm just like, I would lose my mind if my books were on the shelf by color. All the subjects mixed in, all the authors in different places matthew over at um uh, mayberry book club is doing these shelf tours right now right i'm watching them every morning he's doing a shelf tour every single morning one shelf i love it right <laughs> bleeding edge the musical <laughs> i would love to see that too um, I tell you, so he's showing his shelves, but there's James Joyce on multiple shelves. There's Calvino all over the place. Like 
I'm like, why are these books not together? Why is the author not together? It's just such a, I just can't wrap my head around. I'm like, why don't you have the authors together on your shelf? Like, seriously, why? You know, I mean, it's his show, so he can do what he wants. Just like any, you know, some 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 booktuber over there can <laughs> put their books on their shelf by color. But it's insanity. Okay? It's insanity. <laughs> exactly right. I'm like, how do you find anything? How do you find anything? If you're, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm a non-judgmental person. You know what I mean? Everything I say is in reference to myself. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, I'm, somebody else can have, oh my God, Mark, yes. I love On a Winter's Night of Traveling. I love that book. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> yes. Becky, you are hilarious. <laughs> oh, it isn't cool if Flannery O'Connor is next to Stephen Hawking. Not cool. <laughs> Not cool at all. I have my um, shelves by subject. I have my shelves uh, by subject, first and foremost. And on those shelves, the author, everything I own by that author is together. And sometimes a book gets away from me, right? But when I notice that, like right when I notice that, I put the book with its brothers <laughs> or sisters, right? Every single time, every time. And and the only things that are not um, organized about my shelves is the stacks that are like this, sideways. I have a lot of sideways stacks on my shelves. Um, not a lot, but, you know, maybe six or seven. No more than 10, right? <laughs> but those stacks are random. They don't have a spot. But all the books that are on my shelves like that, they they are they are together for sure. <laughs> God, y'all are hilarious. So very cool. The room note. You're so silly, man. No, you don't. I, I I love to I love to organize my books, but I don't do it very often. But when I do it, I really enjoy myself. That's for sure. Well, um, I put I put the author, I put the books uh, together with the author. So, um, you know. There's there's authors that are like that, I'm sure. But I do have a classic. I have like a bookshelf that is classics predominantly. And then I have a bookshelf that is like contemporary fiction. You know, I have all like literary fiction and contemporary fiction and classics, all the fiction pretty much in one spot. And um, those are grouped by author for sure. <laughs> Very cool, y'all. Y'all are hilarious. Nice. Yeah, just walk by and poke one book. Push it, push it back on the <laughs> Little. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> y'all are great. Man, I would love to have a ping to penguin wall as well i love um i love uh seeing jacks as well over at rambling rack and tour he's got a great uh collection of books 
I wish he would give us a bookshelf tour. He started doing it, but it is uh, nice. Yeah, keep presses together. That's a that's a good way to do it for sure. Well, you can always remember, you know, the kind of the the place that you found or or the press that put out a certain edition when you have them like that for sure. So, all right, guys, we hit a we hit an hour. I'm gonna call it because I am exhausted. And uh, thank you very much for coming by. Thank you, uh, the room note. Melissa Federer, Mark at Richardson Reads, Deb, Scott and Becky, uh, Yasmin, the room note, or Yasmin at To the Lit House, sorry. Uh, Scott Danielson, always, always a pleasure, buddy. And um, yeah, neatly published. Thank you for coming by. Uh, C.S. Miller, Moto, I forget your, your handle here on YouTube, brother. Jason at uh, C.S. Miller Books. I should check him out on on Instagram. He really sells some great stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah, Melissa, I'm going to enjoy my day tomorrow. I love Saturdays. It's my favorite day of the week for sure. Well, Sunday too. <laughs> I love them both. Y'all are really cool. Thank you for coming by. I'll catch you on the next one, all right? See you later. Bye, book team. <laughs>